everyone in the WWE just keeps breaking character and god damn do I love it. Not only is it providing me with plenty of video substance, but genuinely, wrestlers breaking character is the best thing ever. It's, it's just funny. Kayfabe is hanging on by mere threads nowadays, so it seems to be more common of an occurrence that wrestlers aren't crucified for letting a few cracks in the mold. I'm D. Wicket, and these are the 10 funniest recent WWE character breaks. Number 10, Kofi Kingston is stupid. Well, I would disagree. If the New Day's last two years have proved anything, it's that Kofi Kingston is actually pretty damn much a genius when it comes to professional wrestling, but back in 2009, Randy Orton would have disagreed with you. During their Red Hot feud, Kingston and Orton were going at it in a match, and a finish was coming up very soon, and Kofi completely forgot about the RKO spot to end the match, botching the move. Orton was upset, screaming at Kofi that he's stupid multiple times. Stupid, stupid. It's always fun to see an overreaction like this, but considering this led directly to Kingston's position on the card being lowered, maybe it's not the funniest of them all. Goes for the air to Kofi Kingston jaw and face planted. Number 9, The Fox Box. That sounds like an awful segment on Monday Night Raw where Alicia Fox gives her opinions on the current product. Kind of like that Rosebush thing or whatever the fuck Adam Rose did that one time. During the odd feud between Nia Jax and Alicia Fox that, remember, saw Fox get legitimate offense in on Nia Jax. What? The two girls were backstage during a segment that involved a gift being given or some- I re- I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't care either. I really don't. Alicia has a fucking gift in her hand for whatever reason, though, and she decides to throw it right at Nia. The box, to no surprise, landed at Nia's face, because that's where Alicia threw the box. Obviously, you idiot, but for some reason, Alicia still acted all like, Oh, <gasps> gasp, I'm, oh shit, I'm, I'm sorry I threw that box. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Number 8, Jericho vs. Robinson. In early 2016, Neville was having a match with Chris Jericho, which saw the former injure his leg performing a baseball slide. Obviously, when there's a real-life injury, you want to put the match to a finish as soon as possible, especially if it's just a Raw match. If it's pay-per-view or if it's a big match on Raw, uh, you know, there's leeway, but if it's just some throwaway Raw match like this, there's no reason to keep going. Jericho, being the veteran he was, did his part to try finishing the match as soon as possible, going for a quick pin. There was no communication between him and Charles Robinson, the referee, however, so so instead of ending the match early, we got a little verbal feud between Jericho and Robinson, which was half Jericho trying to actually draw disqualification because he was pushing Robinson, and half Jericho legitimately pissed the fuck off. <laughs> sure Greater were. than Trudeau. Greater than all of them. This is the same Jericho who disowned Canada uh, at Roadblock Saturday night. Okay? They don't disown down. Oh, Does he, he have him? No. He's Kick out at two. He's hurt. Uh oh. Oh, no, no. That, wow. No need for that. That is oh, The official had no choice. Yeah. You're Winner by disqualification, Neville. Is Jericho that bothered by this whole AJ Styles thing? Number seven, Randy Orton's a cheerleader. This will never not be a great gift right here. Randy hits a gigantic RKO on the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, and has proper celebration for his achievement afterwards. Seriously though, what the fuck is this? What what is this? Christian's facial expression sort of tells the whole story. W what is this dude doing? LOL. And Christian RKO from the Viper. Number six, I hate country music. Remember when I said Kofi Kingston isn't stupid and that the New Day stuff? Kingston took kayfabe and legitimately just took a fat shit all over it because his exact message was, I hate country music. Country music sucks. In fact, now saying that country music sucks, it's the real person playing Kofi who agrees country music sucks. Jim Cornette probably wouldn't like that line too much, but damn, is it funny. Country music sucks. Number five, Jamaican. Oh, and uh, speaking of Kofi Kingston being Jamaican, well, how about the time Triple H questioned his true origins? During the lead up to bragging rights, Kingston was trying to get Team Red under control and all on the same page, but instead of them properly listening to what Kofi said, Triple H's words are actually what got everyone on the same page. Oddly enough, though, H didn't say any words of encouragement, but instead asked what happened to Kofi's accent. The look on the man's face says it all. Where indeed did that accent go, Kofi? Where did it go? Guys, 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 come on, guys. Guys, come on. Hey, this is exactly what SmackDown wants. Aren't you supposed to be Jamaican? What happened to your accent? Yeah. 
by you Jamaican. Number four, Randy Orton is a groupie. Randy Orton just doesn't give a shit. He really doesn't give a shit. The New Day were bragging about how they, in one night, became the greatest group in the history of the WWE. They had become greater than the Authority. They had become greater than Evolution. And they had become greater than Legacy. After listing off all these, Woods gives a solid line asking Randy just how many groups he's been a part of in the WWE. This managed to crack Orton, and as they continued on, they got him into full-on laughter for a few seconds. The New Day, proving once again that they're the best. The New Day accomplished more than any other team in history. The New Day accomplished more than any other team ever. Dang, Randy, how many groups have you been in? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You give a whole new definition to the word grouping. <laughs> Number three, the pinnacle of WWE champions. I take that last line back. Uh, the New Day aren't the best. They're almost the best. CM Punk, now he's the best. We've mentioned this moment before, but I genuinely dare you to get upset over Punk snickering at Triple H's shining ego. During a segment where every WWE champion still a part of the company at the time was in the ring, Stephanie McMahon had the mic and was talking up her husband, the game Triple H. To no surprise, the massive cock that is his ego was being stroked all over the place, up and down, left and right, as Steph made a point to say that Hunter was the pinnacle of WWE champions, the pinnacle of greatness. CM Punk can then be seen in the background corpsing his ass off, because of course he is, and that is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined here tonight by some of the greatest and most decorated former champions ever. The King of Kings, my husband, Triple H. Which is why it's only... Number two, The Undertaker's Hot Tag. This one is really weird, isn't it? Back in the house show in 2009, WWE was doing a house show classic. The typical run-of-the-mill main event. Take all the biggest names you've got in the company and throw them into a tag team match. Taker was on the outside of the ring and for some reason he just hyped the shit out of this hot tag. You could see him running the ropes like he's the ultimate warrior or Eddie Guerrero slamming the mat, pushing the ropes up and down. I like hyped up Taker a lot. I think this could have been an interesting thing to see more often, but because it only happened this one time, it's hilarious. And number one, Mark Henry being outran. This isn't a typical character break, but technically, it's a character break. The Nexus were a pest in the WWE, and the locker room had to band up together to take them all down. One time when they were running the yellow and blue banded boys out of the backstage, you could clearly see everyone chasing down the Nexus members, except for Mark Henry who stupidly was ahead of the Nexus members. He never realized that he was running in front of everybody and he could have just turned around at any point and started beating them up, which is obviously stupid, but it's also really... Quick like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at DWickerYT and check out our merch down in the description below. It's a link. That, that is boy. The official had no choice. Yeah. Your winner by disqualification, Neville. It, it's your. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment saying that I subscribed, and you will be replied to. We'll be doing as many as we can.